The Airbus A320 revolutionized aviation, but now Airbus has something even bigger planned, a successor by the mid-2030s. Why replace a legend? And what groundbreaking innovations are in store? Stay tuned to discover the future of air travel. Why is the single aisle market so critical to commercial aviation? The single aisle market isn't just important, it's the backbone of commercial aviation, representing a significant portion of the industry's revenue. It's where both Airbus and Boeing have invested heavily, battling for dominance. While Boeing 737 has historically been the leader, Airbus has been chipping away at its market share, particularly with the A320 family. But how did Airbus achieve this lead? And what makes the A320 family so special in this lucrative market? To understand the importance of the single aisle market, we need to recognize the sheer volume of flights operated by these aircraft. They are the workhorses of the aviation industry, handling short to medium haul routes, which make up the bulk of global air traffic. Airlines rely on these aircraft for their efficiency, cost effectiveness, and versatility, serving everything from dense metropolitan routes to regional connections. But what happens when a market becomes this competitive? How do companies like Airbus and Boeing stay ahead? The dominance of Airbus in this segment has significant implications, not just for the company, but for the entire industry. Airbus's edge in this competition has been sharpened by the A320's continued success. But this success didn't come overnight. It was the result of strategic innovation and timing. Understanding this market's dynamics is key to grasping why Airbus is now focusing on the future of the A20. The A20 wasn't just another aircraft, it was a revolution in commercial aviation. But how did it manage to eclipse Boeing 737, which had long dominated the single aisle market? First introduced nearly four decades ago, the A320 was the aircraft that truly brought Airbus into prominence. It was Airbus's response to the Boeing 717 and 737 single aisle dominance. The groundbreaking A320, unveiled in 1984, introduced advanced technology that made it a game changer. The A320's cockpit was a marvel at the time, making others look primitive by comparison. But what exactly set it apart, and how did it modernize commercial aviation? The A320 featured a highly automated ergonomic glass cockpit with flight envelope protection, setting new standards for pilot ease and safety. It also introduced many firsts, like fly-by-wire technology and carbon brakes, which improved handling characteristics and reduced pilot workload by providing precise control. Other plane makers like Boeing and McDonnell Douglas were left stunned at how outdated their analog cockpit concepts looked in comparison. But it wasn't just the cockpit that the A320 had drastically modernized, the entire aircraft was a leap forward. When the A320 was introduced, it came at a time when airlines were seeking more efficient, reliable, and comfortable aircraft. The A320 delivered on all these fronts with innovations that not only improved performance, but also reduced operating costs. Its efficient use of space, advanced aerodynamics, and the introduction of composite materials for weight reduction were all ahead of their time. These features didn't just keep the A320 in the race, they put it in the lead, turning it into the backbone of many airline fleets. But was technology the only factor in its rise? How did Airbus manage to appeal to airlines across the globe? The A320's rise wasn't just about technology. Airbus also understood the importance of flexibility and customization, offering airlines a range of options to tailor the aircraft to their specific needs. This adaptability, combined with superior fuel efficiency and reliability, made the A320 a favorite among airlines worldwide. The A320 wasn't just a new aircraft, it was a new way of thinking about air travel. The Boeing 737 had been the reigning king of the skies, so how did the A320 manage to challenge its dominance? The A320 and Boeing 737 are often compared as they are the two leading aircraft in the single aisle market. Both aircraft have their strengths and are beloved by airlines for different reasons. The 737 is renowned for its powerful takeoff performance thanks to its robust Pratt & Whitney JT-8D low bypass turbofan engines, which allow it to achieve higher maximum speeds and quicker acceleration during takeoff. But the A320 offers its own set of advantages, including excellent maneuverability, enhanced stability, and control. A noticeable and important difference is the width of the cabins, where the A320 is 7 inches wider than the 737. This extra width may not seem like much, but just ask anyone who's flown on both planes and they'll tell you that passenger comfort is better on the A320 because of the extra space. But again, this could vary depending on cabin configuration and seating arrangements. But what about operational aspects? How do these aircraft compare in terms of efficiency and cost? 
Compared to the Boeing 737, the A320's armed door opening mechanism is superior, making it easier to operate in emergency situations. Additionally, it's reportedly easier to stack and load bags onto the A320, while the Boeing 737 generally requires lower maintenance costs. However, the A320 offers lower per-seat operating costs, although the extent could vary depending on specific airline practices, fuel prices, and flight conditions. When we compare the most popular variants of the original 737 and A320, the 737-800 and the A320-200, the A320 has a slightly higher range of 3,780 nautical miles compared to the 2,930 nautical miles of the 737. The 737 does, however, come with a higher maximum capacity of 198 against 190, as well as a slightly higher cruise speed of Mach 0.785 compared to the Mach 0.78 speed of the A320. But the A320's improved comfort, control, and maneuverability were enough for the tide to swing in Airbus's favor. Despite the success of the A320, Airbus decided that the aircraft could do even more. But what prompted Airbus to upgrade an already successful aircraft, and what makes the NEO so special? The A320neo, which stands for New Engine Option, was Airbus's response to growing environmental concerns and the need for more fuel-efficient aircraft. The A320neo family incorporated new engines such as the Pratt & Whitney PW1000G and the CFM International Leap 1A, which offered significant improvements in fuel efficiency and noise reduction. These engines, combined with advanced aerodynamics and wing sharklets, resulted in over 15% improvement in fuel savings compared to the previous A320 models. But how significant were these improvements and what impact did they have on the market? But the A320neo wasn't just about better engines. What other changes made it a favorite among airlines? Airbus also introduced new cabin features such as enhanced passenger comfort, improved lighting, and more space for overhead bins. These changes made the A320neo family even more appealing to airlines looking to offer a better experience to their passengers while keeping operating costs low. But why did airlines flock to the A320neo in droves? The answer lies in its perfect blend of efficiency, reliability, and passenger comfort. But how did Boeing respond to Airbus's success, and what happened when the competition heated up? The introduction of the A320neo family not only strengthened Airbus's position, but also forced Boeing to respond with the 737 MAX program. However, while the A320neo has seen tremendous success, Boeing 737 MAX has faced numerous challenges, most notably safety issues that led to a worldwide grounding of the aircraft. This turn of events further boosted Airbus's dominance in the single-aisle market as airlines sought alternatives to the troubled 737 MAX. So, with the A320neo family leading the way, what's next for Airbus? How can they possibly improve on such a successful platform? Over the subsequent years, Airbus introduced more variants of the A320neo family, including the A321LR, or Long Range, and the A321XLR, or Extra Long Range which offered extended range and allowed airlines to operate transatlantic routes with a narrow-body aircraft. These variants opened up new possibilities for airlines, enabling them to connect cities that were previously unreachable with narrow-body aircraft. The A320neo family's versatility and adaptability have made it a cornerstone of many airline fleets, continuing the legacy of the original A320 while pushing the boundaries of what's possible in single-aisle air travel. With the A320neo's success, why is Airbus now looking to develop a successor, and what can we expect from this new aircraft? In February 2024, Airbus CEO Guillaume Fari revealed that Airbus is engaged in two distinct but intertwined projects. The development of the 1,000 nautical mile range hydrogen-powered aircraft called the Zero-E, and a short to medium range A320 successor that will reportedly make use of sustainable aviation fuel. But what challenges do these new developments face, and how soon can we expect to see these new aircraft in the skies? But why is Airbus Airbus investing so heavily in these new technologies. What will the next decade of air travel look like? Airbus aims to have both aircraft take to the skies by the mid to late 2030s, with the hydrogen-powered aircraft expected to launch between 2027 and 2028. However, the A320 successor is expected to have an extended development period given that it will be based on a new platform. The original Boeing 737 airframe is over 70 years old and that of the Airbus A320 around 40 years old. So, with all the modifications and re-engineering done on their respective airframes so far, it's clear to see that they cannot be further stretched or modified. But what will this new A320 successor bring to the table, and how will it shape the future of air travel? The design of a new A320 aircraft would depend on the engine selection, and Airbus is exploring its options. 
But what kind of engines will it use? And how will these innovations change the future of commercial aviation? Airbus is considering engines such as CFM International's Rise Open Rotor engines. The A320 successor would be able to deliver a fuel burn reduction of 25 to 30 percent and also be capable of running on 100 percent sustainable aviation fuel. It will also consist of models whose seating capacity will vary between 140 and 240 people. But how will these innovations impact the aviation industry and what can passengers expect from this next generation aircraft? As Airbus develops a new platform, could an existing aircraft family play a pivotal role in the future? And could the A220 be the answer? The A220, specifically the development of a stretched A220-500 variant, could potentially be the perfect A320 replacement. But is Airbus ready to make this bold move? The A220 was originally developed by Bombardier as the CS series before Airbus acquired the program. The aircraft has been praised for its fuel efficiency, advanced aerodynamics, and superior passenger comfort. Airbus has revealed future plans to complete the A220 family with a larger variant, which would be called the A220-500. But could the A220-500 truly replace the A320? And what hurdles does Airbus face in bringing this aircraft to market? The A220-500 may also gain new composite wings to take full advantage of the new engines while providing improved aerodynamics. But will these upgrades be enough to position the A220 as the A320's successor? The A220 is already a very fuel-efficient and comparatively eco-friendly aircraft with excellent performance. The addition of next-generation engines and new composite wings would take it far ahead of the competition. But could this aircraft really replace the A320, a plane that has defined Airbus for decades? As Airbus looks to the future, its ambitious plans could reshape the entire industry. Will these innovations secure Airbus's lead, or will Boeing mount a comeback? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.